everybody, it's Jamie, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own flare pins from scratch. As you may know, a few million women marched all over the nation in order to promote their environmental, social, and political beliefs, including, but not limited to, gender equality and reproductive rights, which I'm a big fan of. I thought it'd be great to show my support by making a bunch of little but fierce pins promoting girl power, except when I went online to buy them, they were over $10 a pin you guys. That is pin incredibly expensive. So today I'm gonna show you how to pin down a much more affordable option. Let's do it girl. Okay, so for this craft, you'll need scissors, a permanent marker, acrylic paint and a small paintbrush, sealer any kind, hot glue, a baking tray with parchment paper, pin backings, and plastic shrink film. If you can't find this at your local craft store, you can always buy it online like I did. This shrink film requires sanding down in order to create a stable surface for paint to stick on. This brand also sells a rough and ready shrink film, which means you can just skip the whole sanding step in general, but I didn't know that until today. And I I already bought this stuff, so uh, you know what? As far as making pins goes, I'm open the either. <laughs> Pin puns. All right, time to make something Pinteresting. Step one. The first step is to create the design for your pin. And as you can see by my flair, anything goes here. You could do food or sports or a name or an emoji or animals and so on. Whatever you decide to go with, I recommend making them between two to four inches wide. Print them out from your computer and step one is done. Step two. The next step is to trace your design with your permanent marker. Now you can go with any color here, but I'll be going with black since that's the most classic look. Place your shrink film over your design printout. Then slowly and carefully trace the borders of each and every design. You could also use permanent markers to fill in the rest of the designs, but I don't have all the colors that I want there, so instead I'll just jump pin to step three, painting your design. Grab any acrylic paint you wish to use and then mix it with a bit of water to achieve a thinner, lighter consistency. If your paint's too thick, it's going to clump onto your shrink film and that's no bueno. Paint your color anywhere and everywhere you want it. Don't worry too much about staying in the lines of your design since you'll be cutting out these pieces. Repeat this technique with as many colors as you like until all of your designs are to your desired look. Step four, once your paint has dried, you'll want to retrace your lines with your permanent marker. This will cover any unwanted paint and reinforce the borders to each design. Ugh, I tried filling in one design completely with permanent marker to show you, but not only are the colors too dark to really see on camera, I also realized I mistraced the design in the first place. It's supposed to look like this, and it looks like this. What can I say, sometimes I'm a real pinhead. You know what, six out of seven designs ain't bad, so moving on. All that's left to do is to bake your designs. First cut out all of your shapes from your shrink film. When finished, position them a few inches from one another on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Then follow the instructions on your shrink film for temperature and timing. I went with 325 degrees Fahrenheit between two and three minutes. Now your designs are half the size they were before and ready for pinning. An optional step at this point is to apply a sealer to your pins. This step isn't necessary, but it offers a more professional finish and it ensures that your colors will stay brighter over time. I simply painted on a light layer of glossy Mod Podge to my pins before giving them time to dry. Either way, the final step is to attach your design to your pin. Apply hot glue to the front of your pin, and then, making sure to keep your design centered, adhere the two together. Repeat this process for all your pins, and you're all done. Not only are these so much fun to mix and match for whatever event you've got going on each day, but they also make phenomenally easy gifts to give to friends. To do so, just cut out cardstock and stick the pins right in the center of it. You can even design the cardstock ahead of time for that soup's profesh look. And now you've got a DIY that's the pinnacle of cork meets fashion. You gotta pin it to win it, baby. Pinning, keep your pin up. All right, I'll put a pin in it now. What type of pin flare did you make? Hit me up on any of my social media or just let me know in the comments below. Speaking of crafting with pins, click the video on your left to create a bracelet or watch just from safety pins. And just because I like saying the word pin, click the video on your right to make your own decorative pin wheels. We pinned it, girl. I'm Jamie and you're on girl.com.